You are watching the Big Dog Post Game Show, brought to you by Viner Forgates and the Big Dog himself, Rick Jacklich, at the Jacklich Law Group. Three. Three, two, one. Good evening from the Viner Four Gate Studios. This is the last Big Dog post game show of the football season. I'm Wayne Viner. That's Mason Viner. The Terrapins have what you called a a statement. It was a statement. It was a beatdown of one of the, I guess one of the SEC programs no longer. Or I think today proved they're not one of the better SEC programs out there, but. Uh, Auburn brand name on ABC, all of America watching for parts of that. Tweets from Dave Portnoy, Scott Van Pelt. I mean, all, all the all the sports personalities were on it. It was a really, really solid day for Mike Locks and his program. 31-13, 24-7 at half. And I'd say not even that close. Maryland could have been up by more. It was a super impressive start. After the half, not so much. But when you have that kind of win... I got some texts saying that Loxie should take off the second half and start calling recruits because when you have that kind of win in that kind of situation, it sort of sticks around. Now, this was a chance. Auburn comes in with 799 wins. They don't get the 800th. Maryland does get their third bowl win in a row, and it's a good number. Maryland goes 8-5 and five on the season, so a lot of good things for what certainly is the, our guys and I was impressed as Maryland cleared the bench. I had finally, and it took a few years, turned to you and go, hey, who's number 20? What's the story of number 34? Uh, who's this guy? And one of the people that you pointed out seems to be a linebacker hybrid, number 51. Who, who is yeah, that? Yeah, we finally saw Dylan Gooden, who was a really, really highly rated recruit at a good council, had to finish his high school career at Wild Lake. Um, you know, the just... You start to see the guys in there, and, and there were some that were missed. Andre Roy uh, was on the injury report today. Neil Avery, a guy who a lot of Maryland fans have been looking for, another good counsel guy from last year's class. He doesn't go. He ends up actually not being able to be dressed the entire season now with injury. Uh, LeVon Scruggs we saw, another guy from Archbishop Spaulding that Maryland's had on the roster for a couple years. He stepped in at safety. Um, we saw Mike Harris out there. Daniel Wingate looked great. Perry Fisher looked really good. That's number 20. Yeah, Ahmed, that was Ahmed's you know player of the game coming into it, the guy to look out for on Maryland's defense. Um, really, really solid football, and it, it showed why uh, Loxley rotates guys because you end up in this point in the season where the game is still is on national television. As much as the bowl season this year, in my opinion, we talked about it in the post game the other night, it's unwatchable. Um there's still there's a lot of people that pay attention to these games when they're on national television. It was a really good showing, and you saw preparation pay off. It does. It did. And you also saw how disappointing the Auburn side look. They brought a lot of fans, but it was, certainly was not their day. So let's talk about the good stuff about the people you probably do know about. Billy Edwards comes out. He really looks like he had it together. And when it was the starters and they were in rhythm, he was exceptional. Yeah, I think you saw a, another instance of, and it's something that I can just never really, I guess, get over with this program, the way Loxley runs things on offense. The the constant rotation, I, I'm starting to think it doesn't allow any quarterback really to truly ever get in rhythm because the receivers are changing so much. The offensive linemen change. Uh, even in this game, Billy didn't look like the same guy after Cam Edge had his series and threw that absolute bomb to Caden Prather who looked like he was a little slow getting off the field, never re returned back to action today, but he was on the sideline and looks fine. Mm -hmm. I think the rotation really hurts a guy like a Billy Edwards, who hasn't been, hasn't started a game this year, has really only seen action on the turtle push, um, but really, really different offense. Much more Mike Loxley, year one offense, a lot of quarterback runs, a quarterback power play is something that Maryland really could have used at many points throughout the season when they needed a yard or two. I love that play. That look, it's sort of an option look. It's an RPO, but the RPO, the run part of that, is the quarterback powering outside between the guard and the tackle. It's a beautiful play. Yeah, and it, it really seemed like Maryland fully healthy with uh, Gadi Edzi up there, Corey Bullock in his last game. Both of those guys you know, gave Maryland a, a solid year when healthy. Kyle Long, who's going to be the yep. lone returner on the offensive line, looked really, really well, solid. I thought Glaze was coming back. I, with the senior bowl accepted for DJ Glaze, it's probably 
it's probably over. It's time in Maryland. You know, that was one of the things that he was kind of waiting for to see. Uh, he'll probably be a solid day two pick. And at this right. point, you know, just like Jalen Duncan last year, right, Maryland, they returned Spencer Anderson. They returned Jahari Branch. That, you know, DJ being part of that offensive line, none of those guys' draft stock went up. They actually all went down. So I think it's really hard to tell them, you know, you're going to come back with Kyle Long, who only started three games this year in the bowl game, mm-hmm. being the only learn- lone return other starter, becomes a really hard sell for a guy to come back and say, I'm going to move up, and this line's going to get better next year. Well, they have a lot of young talent coming in that line. Uh, DJ Glaze fact, the thought might keep him around. His girlfriend is Diamond Miller, the women's basketball star, who's still quite involved with the women's basketball program. So that's a, a great UM Terps couple there. All right, Cam Edge, you had the first interview when Cam committed. You've been watching him. You've had the story, and people say, who's Cam Edge? I say, you got to ask Mason because he actually knows. So who is Cam Edge? Yeah, Cam Edge is is one of those COVID guys that I think really ended up at Maryland, possibly. I'm not going to put words in his mouth, but Maryland had a lot better shot because of the circumstance there. He was at the Matha for the first three years of his high school football career, reached that kind of like four, three and a half, four-star cusp. ESPN called him a four-star today. Uh, Then he returned home to Smyrna, Delaware, and for those of you that follow football in this area, that is one of the best programs in the state of Delaware. They compete for state championships year in, year out. That's where Cam finished up during the pandemic, comes down to College Park, and look, you saw the arm today. I mean, all those pieces are are there with with Cam Edge. It's going to be a matter of you know, the battle going into the spring, which is looking like, you know, the first true quarterback battle now since uh, Dax Garman showed up and, and, and Randy Dax had Garman. didn't have any quarterbacks that year. Yeah. Um, but I think the Terps, between MJ Morris, who's now with the team, mm-hmm. um, is going to start, you know, practicing in the spring, will be part of all the workouts from this point on. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cam Edge and Billy Edwards, you know, those guys, they're going to come out with a guy that, that can play mm-hmm. and, and will play. I think we'll get next year's schedule, win six games for them. I would love to see a B Cam Edge, just a local guy that, you know, a guy whose dad was a Maryland fan right. and just, you know, everything they've had to say about the program to this point and really, you know, waiting his turn too. He has. I've been a Billy Edwards guy. When I see the multi talent, the, the true multi, the run, some pass, the threat to drop back and take off, and then the run with determination. The guy is bringing it. And he's a big guy. Bruce said he reminds him of Allen with Buffalo. Yeah. He can do both. We'll see if he can work on the, the throwing the ball. So Cam Edge comes out, throws that 50-plus yard dart, hits Prather in the hands. And I'm thinking, when was the last time I saw that? And it brings back memories of a Scott Milanovic type of real drop-back quarterback that can get the ball way downfield. And uh, so for those who talk about maybe looking back at Neil O'Donnell or Dan Henning or Boomer Esiason, my friend Ned brings up watching James Milling run down the middle and catch those balls back in the 80s. Few and far between of guys who can actually accurately throw the ball 50 plus yards. So that is an impressive look. Yeah, it's one ball. You know, Leah had his moments with the deep balls too. It's one ball, but the whole story on Cam Edge is he can he can do that. Yeah, that is true. And, and you know, like I said, Leah had his moments when he was healthy. We didn't really see much of him once he started to get dinged up, which which would basically took three games every year. Yeah. Um, and that's one thing when you watch Billy that you saw the same sort of issue with today, which was the short default to Ja'Shawn Jones. That should have been, I mean, that should have been a great ending for six. It's right. six years done here. The first play of the game. The first play of the game. Threw yeah. it to the wrong shoulder. The tie fell in out route that should have been intercepted. Mm-hmm. I mean, that ball, if he gets it out earlier, has right. that more of a loop look to it, that pro quarterback yep. look, it you opens the field up. So we have a lot of time now, months, to talk about things that didn't go right, but I think we can spend a few minutes after the break talking about some things that did go right. This is the Big Dog Post Game Show. Maryland all over Auburn. 31 to 13 in Nashville to end the season 8 and 5. We'll be back in a moment. I'm Wayne Viner from Viner Four Gates. We make your company work. I'm Martha Smith with Viner Four Gates. Two factor authentication is a must have in today's world. Security training for your company is a must. The crooks are getting smarter. We have to give you the edge to fight back. The biggest difference in a truck accident versus a car crash 
is the investigation that the lawyer has to do right from the beginning of the case. Number one is obtaining the logbooks of the driver to show that the driver was not rested properly according to federal law. Uh, investigating through the black box and getting an expert to figure out from the black box of the truck, the speed of the truck, or where the truck had been. So it's just different type of handling. Usually you have catastrophic injuries involved with tractor trailers as well. You have a massive, heavy vehicle that strikes a much smaller vehicle, you're going to have more massive injuries. So it's a different ball game. And if people are injured in a truck crash, they really, really need to find a lawyer that knows what he's doing with truck crashes. Back on the big dog post game show, Mason, there certainly were some highlights uh, of this season. What jumps out? Who is your player of the year? And, and maybe if you can come up with one or two, what's your play of the year? Yeah, my player of the year has got to be Caden Prather on the offensive side of the ball. Give a shout out to uh, Donnell Brown on the defensive side of the ball who steps it up, you know, goes up a couple of levels in, in football from kind of low-level FCS to Big Ten and really made some standout plays for Maryland uh, throughout the year. Moment of the year for me has to be the win at Nebraska. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that that really showed, along with this one, I, I got to give this game a lot of credit because teams – Loxley said it post game right away. You know, a lot of teams have been folding. A lot of guys have been saying, you know what, like a Bo Braid, there's no chance he's playing on basically 90% of the teams in college football anymore. The win at Nebraska really showed that Maryland could get back up and win. And win. Mm -hmm. You know, they had a really rough stretch there coming off that Penn State loss, mm -hmm. the Ohio State loss, you know, just really, really tough moments mm -hmm. to try the team. But to just pull a game out like that on the road in front of 85,000 fans in a place they hadn't won before. Mm -hmm. Uh, that that really was a meaningful win for me uh, as a fan. And then, you know, obviously the bowl game, showing up, having the guys opt in, showing up ready to play. Auburn clearly wasn't at that level. Right. Clearly Auburn, it was checked out and, and they weren't there because that team's put on some really good performances throughout the year. Uh, but I think those just go to what Mike Loxley is trying to put together here. It's not all the way there. We saw some of the penalties today. We saw some of the negative points. But I think year over year you are seeing progress, even though they did drop the ball on having a better record. Frankly, left two games on the field that would have made this a great season. They did. Um, it's an odd one moment of the year. I actually enjoyed that comeback against Michigan. There was a couple minutes there when I thought we were going to beat the number one team in the country with all of those Michigan fans in College Park, and I, I thought we were going to pull it off and that there's hope that you're going to play the top teams in the country, and it's going to be a slugfest. We're in the game. We were in the game at Ohio State. We are in the game at home against Michigan. I have asked for a long time, you don't go from losing these games by 50 points to winning them. You go from losing these games to being in the game, and then the next step is to go win them. And this is a year we've been in the game. Of course, you want to talk about the down points, uh, the loss to Illinois, and the loss at Northwestern. I really enjoyed going to Northwestern. I think that was pretty cool. Uh, the other moment of the year was uh, you on the postgame show after Illinois. That was one of your better rants of the or year. Or Northwestern. I mean, they, they were equal in, in that sense. Um, they were player of the year. I'm going to go with Bo Braid. And if not that, then Trader. You take a look at Bo Braid, somebody that we watched. Local guy comes in. You say he has the talent. Now you go all these years down the road, and he's an NFL talent. And it, it happened in College Park. Another defensive back that's going to make it. On the offensive side, I really enjoyed talking to Glaze. And you don't get to see the offensive linemen as much on the public side. But when you get to go talk to these guys about how the plays work and how the timing works, and they can explain the entire offense without even being prompted, I love that part of the offensive line. These guys have to know a lot more than it looks. It's not just blocking. And when you end up having a pro prospect that, once again, a guy that you saw develop, and you feel that you sort of know a little bit, and he's going to be playing on Sunday, I think that's a fantastic story. Thanks for doing this all year. It's another year yeah. in the books. And, you know, of course, one more thing that we have to mention, just the passing of Special K, you know, not seeing him at the bowl game, not seeing him on the sideline, and just everything right. that he gave to uh, gave to Maryland football. Yeah. And it's been a strange year not seeing, you know, a guy who we've you've had – on the show. Yeah, you know, he's been a friend. The memorial service is January 20th in Columbia. And when we get all the information, we'll try and put that up. But it is on the 20th in the afternoon. Um, he, he was a good friend. He was a great Maryland therapy. 
Yeah. And he cert certainly was gonna miss gonna miss him being there, even though you know as he got older. I'm not sure if he fit in as much, but everybody everybody that went to Maryland football games, you know, everybody that was a student let's not Maryland. talk about old people who might not fit in anymore. I think that's enough for you <laughs> for this season. Thanks to Rick Jacklich and of course our hometown IT team, which is Viner Fourgates. If you want to talk IT at the level we talk football. Call Viner Four Gates. You can ask for me. You can ask for Mason. And you see the number popping up on the screen here. The local number is 301-251-2900. Thanks for watching. We will see you after the Purdue basketball game on Tuesday as we hope that the Terrapins once again beat the number one team in the country. Good evening from the Viner Four Gates studio. And go Terps.